Hi, I'm Bob Aldridge. Today I'd like to go over the manual operation of the NIDA uh, 130E trainer. Uh, to uh, start the operation off though, I think it's good if we take a, a quick survey of the trainer itself to become familiar with where some of the uh, switches and boards and stuff will need to be placed. On the trainer itself, we have a display at the top that's going to show us the uh, basic operation of the, the trainer itself to give us voltage values and things like that. Uh, there's a keyboard that's on the trainer that will allow us to insert different uh, troubles and other kinds of commands uh, to help us uh, manually operate this particular system. There's a 5 uh, to plus 24 volt power supply. There's the negative supply, minus 5 volts to minus 24 volts. We have three positions for uh, PC cards to um, be used in, on this particular trainer. They're labeled PC1, PC2, PC3. The PC stands for uh, printed circuit, uh, for printed circuit 1, printed circuit 2, printed circuit 3. And what they're going to do is they're going to house uh, whatever uh, module that you uh, have for the technology that you'll be studying. Um, they just plug right in on the, the board, the trainer itself. You need to make sure that they are centered and uh, all the pins and then just lightly push it in and now we have a connection. Uh, what we're going to be doing with this particular uh, board today is doing some troubleshooting with it so you'll see how that works. Uh, on the back panel there are some connections to interconnect with the uh, computer itself if we want to go to the CAI uh, type operation. There, uh, make sure you use the CAI connection when you do plug in. Uh, on the newer version, there will be a USB uh, port here as well, and uh, you can uh, use that instead of the CAI. Um, the, the two CMI connections are for a network operation of the trainer and uh, one is to connect to the uh, computer itself, the other is to daisy chain into another trainer. Um, you probably will never need um, to use that particular communication port. There's um, a couple of power transistors on the back for the uh, power supplies for regulation. You've got two fuses. Uh, on the back for uh, the operation, so you might, you know, if uh, something gets shorted, you might have to uh, uh, replace one of those fuses. There's two BNC connectors on the back. This is for a built-in uh, uh, digital multimeter. Um, you've got an input for uh, current and an input for voltage. Um, you know, it's, a, it's nice to have that. Uh, it's usable, but uh, for uh, your students to be able to really uh, work well, I would recommend using a handheld multimeter or a lab tech or lab type uh, multimeter so that they get the experience of using uh, the equipment that they would find in the in the field. Um, the last thing is we have the on off switch over on this corner of the unit and then the, the power cord connection. This particular unit will work at either 120 or uh, 240. Uh, if you uh, need to make the change on that, you just need to swap the module around. There's little arrows on this that will uh, give you the indication for that. So let's get into the operation of uh, using the 130E trainer uh, from the uh, standalone software. To go into the manual mode, the, the best thing to uh, do on starting up is to shift, push down on the shift key at, while you turn the main power switch on and the system will go through a self-test and then go right directly into the uh, manual mode operation. Uh, if uh, you don't push the shift key down when you turn the power switch on, uh, if it was used in the CAI mode the, uh, the previous time it will automatically go back into the automatic mode. Um, so the only way that you can uh, force it into manual mode is to press the shift key and then turn the power switch on. If you uh, normally use it that way and you don't use the CAI, then um, you won't need to keep pressing the shift key. Every time you turn it on, it will stay in that manual mode. There's a number of functions that we can control from the keyboard. Um, 
All of these are going to deal with the shift key and then we're going to be pressing one of the numeric uh, uh, keypad numbers. Um, and it's a, a combination, so you have to press the uh, shift down and hold it as you press the uh, one through six key for um, what we can change for the functions. Uh, there's normal defaults on this unit so that uh, when you f turn the power on, unless you've uh, modified it, the uh, display voltage should be on, as you can see uh, here that's showing the display voltage. Uh, there's a warning system to tell you if there's a, a, a problem or, or whatever when you uh, first turn it on, uh, that is normally on. The little uh, speaker, which you probably heard when we cycled through, um, is normally on. Uh, the cursor uh, can either be uh, fixed or it can blink, and the, uh, the control on that uh, is so that it's in the, the stationary mode. There's the onboard DV, uh, DVM, uh, and it's sh normally shut off. Uh, again, we'll be using uh, a separate uh, digital multimeter for uh, making our measurements. Um, the voltage display, though, uh, can either uh, show tenths of a volt or it can show hundreds of a volt. Uh, the default is the uh, tenth of a volt, as you see right here. Um, but if we go through and press the shift key and do the one uh, to uh, display the voltage, uh, you can see that um, the display voltage now has been removed and it is no longer visible. To get it back, just press the uh, shift key and the one, and now we have it back on. The warning system is the shift two. So um, it's off, and we can turn it back on by just doing the shift two again. And you can see that it's cueing you to let you know exactly uh, what has been turned on and turned off. Um, shift 3 is for the sound. I'm not going to go through that. Shift 4 is the, uh, the um, blinking cursor. So you can see now where the uh, cursor is blinking to uh, draw your attention to the uh, entry point for commands. So we'll uh, go ahead and turn that uh, back off. Um, Shift number five is for turning on the digital multimeter, and all you're going to see there is the um, voltage value shown at the bottom. Again, this multimeter is a uh, DC as well as AC, and to be able to click through, just uh, shift F5, and then we'll go right to DC. It will also do current for DC, and then we're back to uh, having it shut off. And uh, again, that's normally we'll just leave it in the off position. But shift six uh, will give us the uh, hundredth of a volt uh, values on the uh, digital meters uh, display. These are coming f basically from uh, the power unit. So as we start activating those, you'll start seeing the minus supply and the plus supply uh, coming, coming up and, and indicating their values. Besides the functions, uh, input from the keyboard, we're also able to enter commands. The command that we're normally going to be using is going to be for a fault insertion uh, into the, uh, the trainer itself so that the student will have the opportunity to uh, use some of the, the boards to practice troubleshooting. Uh, depending upon which uh, command that we give it or, or which fault that we want it to do, all it's going to do is change the relays that interconnect all of the different pins for uh, interconnections and for signal or uh, shorts or opens. So uh, it's a pretty simple little process of doing, uh, entering the, the functions in. They're going to, the functions vary depending upon which card that you have inserted into the trainer. Uh, most of the cards will have uh, at most 16 faults and um, they'll be labeled from 00 through 15. And to enter the um, fault into the particular trainer, you have to press F first for uh, saying that you're going to be putting a fault. You have to identify which one of the PC locations that you're actually going to have the uh, board inserted in. So in this case, we've got it in position one, so I'll just put a one 
for um, having that board in there. And then I have to insert the fault. In this case, I'm going to insert the fault of uh, 12. Notice that the uh, fault that we just entered in is uh, shown in the display. Uh, it's really not activating any of the relays to uh, perform that function until you press the Enter key. And then now um, that particular fault has now been entered into the board. The nice thing on this is that I, can't, I don't have to just enter one uh, trouble at a time. I can enter multiple uh, troubles. Again, uh, each of these uh, boards uh, will have uh, the maximum of 16 different faults that can be uh, generated. And it depends upon the particular board on the number that uh, is available. So let's go ahead and we'll enter one more. Uh, we'll press the F key uh, for fault. We're still in, pos in uh, PC position one, so I'll put a one in to indicate that the board is located there. And now we're going to put in trouble four. So to do that, I have to push O four. And remember that uh, the troubles have to be entered as two digits. And then we'll press enter to uh, enter that particular trouble into the board. So now we've got two troubles uh, pre-assigned to uh, this particular unit. Uh, if you forget which troubles you uh, inserted, uh, you can use the command uh, display function and abbreviation. So display would be D, and then function is F, and press enter, and it's going to show uh, the fault. In this case, it's showing the fault 104. Uh, if I press enter again, it's showing the next fault that we entered in, which was the 112. Push it one more time, and then it says end. So that way I know that those are the only two uh, problems that I've inserted in the board. If I press enter again, it will clear that uh, from being displayed. So uh, if you enter stuff in and you forget exactly what it was that you uh, entered in for that particular student, uh, you can come back later and uh, find out exactly which of those troubles that you've uh, entered in. Uh, the listing for all of these troubles are going to be by board. Uh, and it's available directly from uh, NIDA. Uh, the uh, module, uh, the, the software module that's available for this is through PDF, and we'll be taking a look at that in just a few minutes so that you can see how uh, that is uh, exercised. The uh, troubles that are shown in the PDFs uh, do not use all the possible troubles for a particular board, so Contacting NIDA and getting that information will be very important. Or if you're a member of CREATE, um, that's one of the uh, folders that I supplied for you so that you can um, get that right off of that disk and print it out and have access to it. And then, again, it's just for uh, certain of the boards. It does not have troubles for every board in every particular study unit.